This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. It was a successful home opener for the Bisons, a 42 to nothing shutout victory on Saturday afternoon and a picturesque day at First Security Stadium. And it really worked out well for the fans that were there early, Coach. You had uh, the walk of brothers over right. two hours before the football game. And uh, I, I know that you really enjoyed uh, seeing all the fans out, enjoying tailgating uh, on the lawn in front of the, great, the uh, Gaines Athletic Center and just everyone having a great day. The weather really cooperated for your football team, and I know that means so much for your football team <clears throat> when you're able to get there early and see the fans there to greet you before you, know, you get inside the complex. It was a beautiful day. I mean, perfect day for college football. Uh, like you said, Billy, the weather was great. We had sunshine, cool. You know, the, the temperature had changed drastically from the middle of the week when we were on the practice field. You know, when it's in the 90s and high humidity and uh, just a uh, great feeling in the air. And you can see that the, the game day culture on the, in front of the Gainus is, is, is awesome. A lot of people out there tailgating. You can see the young men in the white shirts. Those are our red shirt freshmen. That was their first experience with the Walker brothers. And uh, just a great start to the day. Okay, let's talk about from week one to week two, <clears throat> talk about improvement uh, in, in a football team. And I know I hear coaches talk about that a lot. What was the biggest improvement you saw from week one to week two? I think it was just the technical execution of, of our game plan in every phase, uh, offense, defense, and, and kicking game. Uh, you know, you can see guys, uh, their progress as far as understanding what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, the, the little bitty tiny steps that it takes to get there. Uh, it was evident. We still have a long way to go. You know, we still have a lot of improvement that we can make. But we did, uh, we did accomplish a lot this past week. You had to be excited with the focus, I thought, <clears throat> early on. Sometimes home openers may be a little bit distracting, kind of like homecoming. But uh, I didn't think your team missed a beat. They came out and got off to a great start. I, you know, our focus was great. And it was great during the week, during practice. Uh, you know, you could tell that these guys wanted to play a lot better than they had the week before. Obviously, playing at home is an advantage. Uh, you know, you were able to maintain your normal routine. The crowd was great. Uh, you know, when you walk out there and you can feel the excitement and, you know, you know the crowd is with you and they're, they're pulling for you, it does something to you. I mean, it, 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 it gives you a little bit more energy and that's what, we, uh, that's what we were able to see out there on the field on Saturday. Last week, we talked about the uh, the block kick that sent the football game to overtime. And I wanted to give Corey Bassett his due because right. he was named special teams player of the week in the Great American Conference a week ago after we taped the show. And, and obviously that was a big play in the football game. Without a doubt. And Corey got a piece of it like we were talking beforehand. Uh, you know, a big play like that, a, a tackle, uh, a blocked pass, a blocked kick, it's kind of like going quail hunting. You got several people that are going to claim credit for it. But, uh, you know, we had interior wise, we had a great push on that. And then Corey did great coming off the edge. And he has a knack for that. So, yeah, we had a lot of guys that, that contributed. And that was a huge play in that game. All right, great to be with Coach as we get sent to look at the highlights from the victory last Saturday, 42 to nothing, the win over Southern Nazarene. And we'll start with first half highlights right after this. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Na, 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 na. I love you so. I love you. I love you. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. We're here. Yay! It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. 
Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Week two, victorious for the Bisons, 42 to nothing. And it was a little bit breezy as far as the afternoon, Coach, when uh, uh, we got ready for the coin toss and when you went out there. Your team, you won the coin toss. You like to put your defense out there on the football field to begin the game. Right. And it, it turned out well because obviously your defense turned away Southern Nazarene uh, to on that first series and your football right. team able to, to get their offense on the field. Well, you know, we do like to defer. and uh, But I, as I walked out to the field for the start of the game, it was obvious that the wind was laying down and actually swirling a little bit. So uh, I don't think it was near as big a factor as far as the wind direction as I thought it might have been earlier in the afternoon because we had a pretty good breeze out there about 4 o'clock when, uh, when I first walked the field. But, uh, you know, we, we do get the ball and the first play is a fullback give and you can see that we got a great surge by our offensive line. Matt Tennyson is doing a great job of running, protecting that football. Uh, we come back and we throw the play action uh, to Eric Kelly in the flat. Park did, made a great read right there, got the ball to Eric. And uh, we come back and we hand the ball to the fullback again. Uh, good surge again by our offensive line. Those guys are doing a great job. This is a third down conversion. You can see uh, it's the double option, get the ball to Eric Kelly on the pitch, Matt Tennyson out in front. Doing a great job. And this is just a play action throwback on the fade route to Andrew Dather. Beautifully thrown ball by Park Parish. Yeah, Andrew, because the coverage was outstanding. Yep. It, it, he made some throws like that all yeah. night long into very tight coverage. And this was good to see. Uh, step right up there and knock the extra point down. Good snap and hold. Cole Blick and staff on the hold. He's doing a great job with that. and. Uh, and there, here we come, and we're, our defense is back on the field. They're running the little, uh, you know, the jet toss. And boy, we do a great job of defending the perimeter right there. Great job by Chris Sarkeesian. Chris was our leading tackler. Chris is a senior who's, uh, you know, a fifth year bison, has worked and worked and worked, is getting an opportunity to get on the field a lot and doing a great job. This is good, great pressure right there by our guys. Defense able to come up with two sacks on Saturday night. Right. And, uh, you know, those guys have very high standards with that. And, you know, we've been at the top of the conference in sacks the last several years. And I know they're, you know, they want to get pressure on that quarterback. This was a tremendous play back to the weak side. Park dishes the ball to uh, uh, that Zach Shelley right there. Park's hustling as hard as he can to make a block out in front of him to spring Zach into the end zone. And uh, that's all I'll say about that. The big disappointment here is that we did not end up with points. Uh, you know, red zone efficiency is a trademark of, of what we've done offensively since we've gone to the triple option. And, uh, you know, we were not able to get in the end zone and get points on that missed field goal. And Bison's so was... up 7 nothing as we head to the second quarter. Right. You know, we're... This is the uh, field goal attempt. It is from the left hash. Got a good snap and hold, but we were not able to convert that. And we're gonna do that because Tristan is a really good kicker and we're gonna keep working on that. Handoff, nothing doing up the middle with our guys. Ball's on the ground. We're fighting for it. You can see great job right there of trying to stay on his feet by Madison Furman. Forced the throw. We get the pick. Uh, uh, great, yeah, great job by our defense. This is Park making a play when there was nothing there. Uh, he's under pressure. He does a great job of throwing on the run. That's Andrew Dather again. Andrew has just got a knack for getting open and making a tough catch. We run the first phase of the midline triple. Hand it to the fullback. Come back, run the option again, and this is Park doing what Park can do. Uh, he gets into the second, third level of the defense. He makes people miss. and. Uh, you know, Park was our leading rusher on Saturday, rushed for over 100 yards. It's been a while since we've had a quarterback do that. And this is the triple option. We get the ball pitched to Eric Kelly. He takes it into the end zone. Great blocking out in front of him. 
and good execution there by Park to get to that phase of the triple. I thought Eric Kelly had a, had a couple of big runs, that third down conversion did. earlier in the game on the first drive, and then obviously uh, there to set up that touchdown and uh, two for two on extra points there in the first half. Right, and as we said, given our troubles that we had in the first ball game, that was really good to see. And even the field goal attempt, you know, we had a, we had a good snap and hold on that. And so, uh, you know, that, that was very promising, and we expect big things out of those guys. You know, those, Madison Furman is a tremendously talented deep snapper. And, uh, you know, as I've said before, we think Tristan's as, as good as it gets. So we're going to keep working on that, and, and that's going to pay off for us down the line. What was the feeling going into the halftime locker room? Obviously, the week before you had gone into the halftime locker right. room with a 13 nothing lead, you go right. into the halftime locker room this week with a 14 to nothing lead. I think the feeling was different. Uh, you know, we had gotten to a point offensively in the second quarter where we felt like we, we had a handle on what they were trying to do. And that, you know, this was a different defensive scheme than they had ever played against us. They've been a four-man front. They gave us the odd front. And uh, if you're not involved in this offense, if you're just involved in defending it, you probably don't know that every week we work against every possible front scenario that we've ever seen. Uh, we work against the odd front. We work against the even front. We work against the bare front. You know, you can get a 3-3 stack. You can get an oaky front. Uh, you can get a 4-2-5 look, you can get a 4-3 with two high safeties, you get a rebel front with A-gap linebackers and, and pinchers in the B-gap, and everything we've ever seen, we cover at some point during the course of the week. And, uh, you know, as you get more veteran with your quarterback, and with your offensive line, and with your slots, uh, you, you get used to seeing all those things, because we do that year-round. We do that every day during spring practice. And uh, it's very difficult for somebody to completely surprise us. So, uh, uh, you know, they did give us a different front, but we adjusted really quickly. And by the time, as I said, we got into the second quarter, we felt like we had a good handle on it. And you talk about adjustments. I don't <clears throat> think we give enough credit to the whole coaching staff throughout a game. Those guys upstairs, and I know you're talking to them, and the adjustments that your team makes throughout a football game. Well, we have done a really good job of that the last two or three years. It helps honestly, to have veteran players who, you know, they have recall. You know, you can refer back to, hey, remember this is what we saw against Pitt State or this is what we saw last year against OBU or whatever. And so you have those discussions and those guys are able to, as I said, recall that and it's easier to make those adjustments. As you work through with a, a team full of inexperienced starters, sometimes, you know, you're starting over again, so to speak. But like I said, because we work on it every week in practice, those guys are you know, getting a feel for it. And I was very pleased with the way we adjusted uh, against the front that, that uh, Southern Naz gave us. All right, the Bisons lead 14-0 at this point of our highlights. We'll take a timeout right here, come back and look at third and fourth quarter highlights right after this. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. Look at me, hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We are at halftime of this portion of our highlights of the Bisons leading 14 to nothing. Harding would get the football to begin the third quarter, Coach, if we look at third quarter highlights. And uh, so many times we see your football team come out and you like to, to put a staple in this third quarter and you get a chance to do this. Well, this is our freeze play. And, uh, you know, when, I, when the defense, defensive line jumps off sides, we have an automatic go to our wide receiver and, you know, Andrew Dather is really good at that. Park did a great job of throwing the ball where it needed to be, come back with a triple, get it to Zach Shelley, who's dynamite with the ball in his hands, as you guys know. 
And uh, you can see that surge, that offensive line is still, still working down the field. That was a big play in continuing that drive. This is Park again. As I said, he's dynamite at the second and third level of the defense. Gets it all the way down inside the five. We're close. And here's a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. I really like the way Park gets down low to run that. And we had a great surge in the interior of our offensive line. And a great way to begin the second half. A 10-play, 68-yard drive. He took almost five minutes off the clock. And Park really had a great game. Park Parish had three rushing touchdowns, one passing. Right. And, you know, Park was five out of eight. And one of those was a throwaway. And uh, percentage-wise, that's probably as good as we've been in a while throwing the football. Our, our passing game has been very effective so far, and that's good to see. This is another double option. Uh, you know, doesn't look fancy. He just gained eight yards. We'll take that. And we come back, hand the ball to Michael Latu. And Michael is, is making his first appearance for us. Did a great job. There's another freeze. Andrew Dather with another beautiful catch with close coverage, well-thrown ball right there by Park again. You know, that was a critical uh, part of our game and the other night. I think we converted three of those. Come back and run the midline triple, and, uh, you know, Park walks into the end zone. Great blocking up front on that. Great faking by our B back. And, uh, you know, we're feeling like we're getting the game under control at this point. You mentioned Park over 100 yards rushing. Coach, 13 carries. He averaged 8.6 yards per carry. Great job, and I think, uh, you know, Zach Shelley had four carries for 90-something yards. He averaged 22 yards <laughs> a carry. Uh, you know, the, I think the big thing is during the course of that game, we ran 55 plays. We averaged 7.6 yards a snap, and that's very uh, good efficiency. And, you know, if, you, if you're able to do that, there's a great chance you're going to win the football game if you take care of the football. Bad snap on their part, and we got great pressure. And, uh, you know, we're in business again on their side of the 50. That ball's on the 30-yard line, and uh, here we go. We move to the fourth quarter. Bison's right now up 28 to nothing. Yeah, I think we ran one play there and then came back with the option, and there's Park, and, uh, you know, he's making it look pretty easy right there. Uh, great job on the, on the triple option. Uh, you know, as I said, boy, we were very pleased with Park's play. He's doing a great job of reading the offense, throwing the football. And, uh, you know, there's, there are his teammates there to congratulate him. And he knows that he couldn't do any of that without his offensive line and great faking and uh, the threat of the pitch. Deep kick right here, Coach. I thought the special teams, you had the one missed field goal, but I thought special teams play was very good. It was very night. good, much improved. You know, uh, we had a lot of uh, really, of course, we love to have the opportunity to kick off. You know, that's, if we can get a lot of kickoffs, that means things are going pretty well for us. And uh, we did a really good job with our kick coverage. Uh, we had some guys that were outstanding on Saturday. Good pressure right there. They do convert. Uh, we got guys flying to the football. You know, we're, at this point in the game, we're give, giving some new guys an opportunity to play. Well, that's John Aaron Howell right there on one of his first uh, tackles as a Bison football player. Here comes Madison Furman to drop the hammer, Coach. That was a great scoop and score. And as you can see, Madison is, you know, Madison can run. Uh, he's got a convoy right there. And, I, you know, I told Chris, be careful how you tackle your teammate. You know, it almost was a horse collar tackle right there. <laughs> and the Bison's victorious by a 42 to nothing count. And, and, again, another extra point, perfect on extra points on Saturday night. Just like we said earlier, that was a big improvement. And, uh, obviously, we're proud of that. How exciting was this uh, for the home opener and you get a chance to address your team right out here in front of everyone. Coach, I know this is a special time at home games uh, when you gather for the prayer afterwards and, and all the parents come down. I think it's one of the best scenes uh, that I've seen in college football when I get to sit above First Security Stadium and look down and, and see uh, all the players with their family uh, after, after the prayer. Well, you know, that's Harding football. And, uh, you know, when you, after a, a game, whether it's a hard-fought victory or a devastating loss, you get a hold of your teammate and you give thanks for the opportunity to play. And this is, uh, 
this is Trendle Stevenson with his. This is kind of one of our routines that we do after a ball game, and uh, you know our guys love it. Trendle's got tremendous energy, and uh, that's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. 42 to nothing. The final score. The Bisons win the football game on Saturday night, and pretty balanced. Uh, you talked about the, the passing game has, has been efficient. Five of eight from Park Parish. He threw for 130 yards, right. 287 yards on the ground, and uh, 417 yards of total offense. There's quite a connection between he and Andrew Dather, the sophomore from Christian, uh, Conway Christian. Right, and uh, you know, that's just kind of the way it's worked out. The first two ball games, Andrew is a tremendously talented young man, and, and we love the way Park's throwing the football. I guarantee you we got some other guys, too, that, that you'll hear about as we go through the season because I really feel like that's, uh, that's a part of our offense that uh, we haven't had to rely on in the past. Uh, we may have to rely on it more going forward, and we are very pleased with the way, as I said, the way he's throwing the football, the way we're protecting the passer. Uh, we've got a lot of weapons. Uh, our slots... Are, are great receivers also. So uh, I'm looking forward to, as we go through the season to seeing how that passing game is going to continue to develop. And on the defensive side, expand on Chris Sarkeesian. You talked about him early in the show. He led your team double figures in tackles with 10, the senior from Arlington, Texas. Well, you, you go all the way back to last spring. Chris had one of the most impressive off seasons of anybody on our football team. When we tested at the end of the year, uh, you know, he was dynamite. Uh, and, and he can really run. Uh, he's strong. He's paid his dues. As I said, he's a fifth-year bison. Uh, been extremely loyal to this brotherhood, and uh, it's great to see those guys get out on the field and, and be rewarded for all the time that they put in. And how is it? How exciting is it for the defense? We haven't mentioned shutout. <clears throat> those right. don't happen every day. But also, you score a defensive touchdown. Right. Huge. You know, those guys, uh, we, we work really hard on calls and turnovers, and, and the fact that we caused one and we were able to take it to a house uh, is, is what those guys live for as far as when you practice your turnover circuit during the course of a defensive practice, you know, you're anticipating, hey, we're going to cause a turnover and we're going to take it to the house. And you talk about that all the time, but the truth is it doesn't always happen that way. You get a turnover, but you may not be able to score a touchdown with it. But uh, we were we were <clears throat> excuse me, we were able to do that, and uh, you could see the excitement uh, it, not only on our defensive football team but the rest of our guys as well. So week two in the books, the Bisons are two and zero. Oh, a big road test coming up as we head to Magnolia this Saturday. It'll be a night game Saturday night, 6 p.m. It'll be the Bisons and Mule Riders. We'll talk about that with Coach, and we'll also hear from Chris Sarkeesian and Park Parish, and have a question for Coach from a fan after this break. When I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. You! 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 Oh! oh. Your fault. You! Uh, my fault? Your fault. Uh. Your fault. You're right. What? It's my fault. What do you mean, your fault? Just the two of us. You're right, it's my fault. We can make it if Maybe we both of us? Maybe just you. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. It's always fun to hear from the Bison players after a home victory. And this week we get to hear from Chris Sarkeesian and then Park Parish. Well, from, we wanted to make a statement from last week. We uh, didn't have a great game. So coaches uh, prepped us up uh, really well this week. And we came out to uh, execute our game plan the best we could. We had a couple busts, but we uh, bounced back from those. Oh, really just uh, whenever they ran the toss, find an alley and get to it. Um, we made a couple big plays on that, stopping them in the backfield on that, and forcing them out to the edge. Well, this was a big step this week, especially from last week. And uh, we're not where we need to be yet, but we're, uh, this game was a, uh, took us in the right step in that direction. They would have a little fun there, too, at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A big play by Madison in front of yeah, him at the end. Absolutely. Andrew is 
just a freak athlete. Um, he really is. And so, you know, we, we call our, our freeze play a lot, and we'll throw it to Andrew just because of how high he can jump, how much of an athlete he is. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be all right with just saying throw it up to Andrew. You know, he's just one of those guys that I trust absolutely to go get it wherever I put it. Uh, and just time and time again, just like you saw tonight, that guy goes and makes him play. So uh, he's, a, he's a really good guy to have out there wide. People thought, you know, we might be down from Donatello last year, but, man, he's really stepped up and he's performing right now at a high level. So. After last week, you know, the way that uh, OKBU kind of schemed us, we, we thought that the double option might be there a lot more. Um, and, it, and it turned out to be tonight. Um, and a lot of times early, we pitch it to the slot. Um, the, the cool thing about the triple option is they just got to make a decision and go with it. And so we have so many weapons, and Zach Shelley uh, and Matt Tennyson and all of our other backs, you know, Eric Kelly, all of those guys, Eric Simmons, uh, they can just roll. And so you, you got to honor uh, everybody. And so uh, the second half, it really kind of opened up for me uh, just because they were trying to take those guys away. Um, and so, you know, just every play, we've got so many options, so many weapons. Uh, offensive line blocked it great. It was just, it felt good tonight. I think we, we might have gone in last week a little bit overconfident. Uh, and we definitely had our minds right this week. Uh, we had a good scheme. Uh, we had a good plan going in. And I thought that uh, across the board tonight, we executed at a high level. Uh, and so I thought we looked good. And, and when we're executing that offense, it's, it's going to, the numbers are going to be there. In the locker room, what difference did, did what happened to you all last week make this week? You know, I mean, we, we knew we were a young team, um, and we still know that we're a young team. Uh, and so we know the potential that we have there. Uh, and just, you could tell a difference in the mindset this week. A lot of people got their first starts last week. Uh, so you could tell a difference in the way the guys were carrying themselves, a little more confident this week. Uh, and we knew. We knew we were going to go out there and roll, and that's what we did. So it, it was good for the confidence level. Uh, and, man, it was just fun to be out there tonight. Chris Sarkeesian and Park Perry is doing a great job afterwards talking about the football game. Two young men that had outstanding nights on Saturday night, the Bison's 42 to nothing shutout victory. And now it's our opportunity to hear from a fan and uh, hear what the question of the week is for Coach Huckabee. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a senior from Texas, and I was hoping to ask Coach Huckabee how the Walker Brothers became a tradition, um, what's the story behind it, and if he plans on that being a tradition for a very long time. Love that question. You know, we, you know, we seem to have awesome questions from our students every week. Uh, the Walker Brothers came about a few years ago. We decided we were going to make a walk. Uh, I think it kind of came along about the same time the tailgating took off in the front of the GAC. And uh, we decided we would walk from Keller, uh, diagonally across the front lawn of the Gainus. And I was meeting with the seniors, and uh, Kelvin Martin is the one that came up with that term. He said, Coach, I think we need to call it the Walk of, the walk of Brothers because we consider ourselves a family, a brotherhood. And uh, you know, we're trying to develop that kind of love for each other. So uh, we love doing that. Obviously, we want to do it when there's a crowd out there. So we usually do it for the first ball game for parents' night and for homecoming. Uh, but I'll throw out a challenge to our fans. If, you know, if we can keep that GAC front lawn packed with tailgaters and, and folks, we'll do it every, every time we have a home game. Uh, our guys love doing it. We feel the energy from the crowd as we walk towards the dressing room. And you know, that's the last thing that we do before we go in and get dressed for the game. So very, we are very appreciative for the support that we have received recently and it was fantastic Saturday. The entire afternoon, the way the crowd stayed in the ball game with us uh, during the course of the game, uh, we, we just appreciate it and we want that every week and uh, we're not gonna take it for granted. We love our fans. Now we've had the opening game that was on the road, the home opener. So it's almost like you have two big events to begin the season and now you kind of get into a routine, I think, in week three. And it's very important, I think, because you have a huge test going on the road against a 2-0 and Southern Arkansas team. I tell you what, if we, if we ever needed to be in a routine, it's this week. This is a very impressive football team. Uh, you know, Coach Keppel has put together down there. And, and you know, you could tell from his comments in the, in the summer, uh, he feels really good about this team. And I understand why after watching them on film. They've done a great job recruiting, and they have got a, lo a lot of young talent on this football team. You know, their quarterback is young, but boy, he's very impressive. His skill set is very impressive. They they do have a veteran offensive line. That's always helpful. Uh, a lot of talented backs, a lot of really good receivers, so the quarterback can spread the ball around. And, and uh, Jonathan Wiseide is a, is a receiver for, for those guys, and he's put up incredible numbers in the first two games. On defense, they're young, but, man, they can fly. And, uh, you know, they've got a... 
They've got a junior college linebacker that's doing a great job for them, uh, Dominique Kelly. Uh, they've got a really talented secondary. Two years ago, I would argue with you that Quan Warren was one of the top corners in this league, and uh, he missed all of last year with a shoulder injury, and he's back, and uh, I'm sure that that's given that, that group a lift. Uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now, and, and rightfully so. They look good to me on film, and so uh, we're going down there Saturday. They're going to uh, dedicate their field in the memory of Coach Rip Powell, who was a, a contemporary of Coach John Prock, who was my coach. Uh, I remember playing when Coach Powell was a coach at SAU, and uh, you know he has a lot of guys from down there that uh, love him, and, and uh, you know. He had a tremendous influence is what I'm trying to say. So I know that's going to be a big, big night for them. So we've got our work cut out for us, but, man, we're ready to go. We can't wait for the challenge. Yeah, and I would imagine uh, that this, this game is going to get a lot of attention around the Great American Conference. Two 2-0 two and o teams going at each other. Southern Arkansas with a come-from-behind win in week one, and then they went on the road and beat a Northwestern Oklahoma team that had really played well in week one. Uh, this past Saturday. That's right. Uh, you know, week one, Northwestern just went down to Monticello and handled UAM. And so uh, you didn't really know what to expect in that football game because I know it was their home opener. They're dedicating a new field. They've got new turf, new stadium. And I, I felt like those guys would be uh, highly motivated to play in the and SAU just handled them. And uh, so we, we know what we're in for. Uh, you know, this is a traditional rival for us. We've had a lot of wars against SAU going all the way back to when I played. And uh, Coach Keppel and I have competed against each other since the 80s when he was the offensive line coach at UCA and I was a defensive line coach at Harding. So uh, really looking forward to this matchup. It's, you know, there's, there is a different feeling in the air, I promise you, this week uh, with our guys, our coaches, and uh, – we can't wait. It's it's really college football at its best for us. All right, Coach, always great to be with you. Have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee.